Good morning, second graders. Today we are on page 193 of your student journal, and we are beginning a new unit. So we are moving on to unit 12. We purposefully are not doing lesson one, and we're moving right into lesson two. So our objective or our goal today is today I will tell time to the nearest five minutes, period. Okay, so boys and girls, what does this really look like? Well, when you were in first grade, last year you learned to tell time to something that we call the half hour, but we're going to be more specific now, and we're going to tell time to the nearest five minutes. So let's look at our vocabulary. And what I see, the first picture I see is this clock. This maybe is like a classroom clock or you might have one of these in your, in your house. Um, but the name of this clock is called an analog clock. That's what we call one of these clocks that has something called a face. So it's called an analog clock. Sometimes people also call it a face clock. But that's the type of clock this could be. So it could be a large one like we have on our classroom walls or it could be a small one on a watch. But if it has a face like this, it's called either analog clock or a face clock. Now another type of clock is a digital clock. Digital clock just has the numbers. They don't give us the circle face, it's just the numbers. So this is what you might see on maybe your iPad or a computer. This looks, this picture looks like maybe an alarm clock, but these are both different types of clock and they both say the same time, you just have to read them differently. Okay, now because the digital clocks are easy to read, because I just say eight and then this colon, these two dots right here, they split the hour and the minute. So the way I read this is eight, 30. So on a digital clock, it's easier because I have the hour in front. This is my hour. And then I have the minute after. And what this set, this colon, these two dots does is it kind of splits it in half. So that's how I read it, 8.30. So that one's pretty easy. But when we get to the face clock or the analog clock, it's a little bit trickier. So there's some things we have to know is analog clocks have two hands. That's what we call these. We call them hands. Now, the hour hand and the minute hand, if you look closely, you'll see a difference between them. The biggest difference is the hour hand is always the short hand. That's called my short hand and my minute hand is my long hand. Now when I read this um, I really have to pay close attention to which hand tells me which and in my example I'll show you how we're able to find the time from this. Okay our steps today say we're going to look at the hour hand to determine the hour. So we always do the hour hand first. We always first look at our hour hand. And then it says, we're going to look at the minute hand to determine the minutes. So second, we look at the minute hand. And we always write it with the hour hand first, the hour first too. So we look at the hour hand write the hour. Look at the minute hand, write the minute. Okay, so boys and girls, what does this look like? I'm gonna put down my green pen and grab my red pen so you can put your pencil down and you could just watch me for a moment. Okay, so here is my first problem. Okay, my first problem looks like this. So notice they gave me an analog clock or a face clock. And when I look at it, I see the two hands, the two hands. So I always want to, as my steps told me, my steps say look at the hour hand first. So 
The hour hand I know is my short hand. So that's my hour hand. Okay, so what do I see about my hour hand? Well, it's past the one, but it didn't get to the two yet. So let me say that again. It passed the one, but it didn't get to the two yet, which means my hour is one o'clock because it didn't reach the two yet. So it has to be one o'clock. Okay, so and notice I put the one in front and that is my hour. Okay, now to get my minute though, it's a little bit trickier. Now, I always am going to start right here. And if I look really closely, and I'm gonna zoom in because I want you to see this really, really closely. If I was to count these tiny, tiny marks, one, two, three, four, five, that's five. And I could keep counting them all the way around because this is the way that my hands move. I could count all of them around. That would work, but it might take me a long time. So what I noticed when I got to the one is there were five. So I can put a five by the one. Now I could count again, and I could say six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I could put a ten by the two. So I could keep counting by ones all the way around it might be trickier and it might take me longer. What I also could do is realize, well, if that was five, that's 10, I could skip count by fives. So I could say five, 10, and where my three is, 15, 20, 25, 30, right on the six, 35, 40, 45, and 50. And I'm stopping because that's where my arrow is pointing. So again, boys and girls, you could have counted by ones, but you might have made a mistake and it would have taken a lot longer. Skip counting by the fives was much quicker. So my minute hand or my long hand is pointing to the 50. And that's because this hand started here and it moved like this. We call that clockwise direction. Okay, let's look at another one, boys and girls. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, so what do I look for first is I always look for my hour hand first. My hour hand first, because I'm gonna write that first. Now this hour hand is so tricky. So tricky. If I look closely, it really, really looks like it is pointing to the eight. But I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna get a ruler to show you this. And I'm gonna move my paper a little bit. If I trace this, and I'm gonna trace it in a pencil so it's a little sharper. If I trace that, I want you to look really closely at that, boys and girls because this is a tricky one. Look really closely. It is almost pointing to the eight. Almost. But it's not pointing to the eight. It is past the seven and it's almost at the eight, but it's not there yet. So that's a tricky one when it's that close. So the hour is actually not eight, it's going to be seven because it didn't reach the eight yet. So that's my hour hand, and I put the hour in the front of the colon. Okay, my minute hand is my long one. Now remember, I start it here, and then I go, here's my five, and I'm gonna skip count 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and I get to 55. So my minute hand is pointing to 55. And what that 55 represents is if I was to count all those tiny little tally marks, there would have been 55. 
So the way I read this time is it's 7.55. So I, I make a break here. So 7, and then I say my minutes together, 55. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's try some together. We are on page 194 in your book. Let me say that again, page 194 in your book. And grab your pencil. Okay, so remember our steps are we always look for our hour hand first, and then we write our hour hand on the hour side. So when I look at these, which one is my hour hand? Well, my hour hand is my short hand. It's our short one. So this is my hour hand right here. That's my hour hand. Now, what do I see about my hour hand? Well, it's past the four, but it didn't get to the five yet. So it's not five because it didn't reach the five. So our hour hand is going to tell us it's four o'clock. Okay, so now when we do the minute hand, we always start on the top and we count and there's five little tallies and then let's skip count by fives to make it faster. That would be 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So if we were just skip counting to save us time, and our t minutes then is 30. And that was our minute hand or our long hand. So our time is 4.30. So our hour is four and our minutes is 30. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's try another one. Okay, so which hand are we going to look to first? We always look to our hour hand, which is our short hand first. So if I look at my two hands, it's really clear that this is my hour hand. Okay, so again, my hour hand passed the 11. It's more than 11, but it didn't get to the 12 yet. It didn't reach the 12, so our hour hand has to be 11. Okay, now to get our minutes, we have to count, start skip counting, and we start here and we get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. So our minute hand tells us it's 40 minutes. So now when we read our time together, it's 1140. That's how we're going to say that, 1140. Okay, so boys and girls, you're going to turn the page and do page 195. You're going to do page 196. Okay, I'm going to let you know on page 196, this one's a little bit tricky because we did not do one like that, but do your very best. All right, have a great day, bye.